Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host Definition and with Marianne on Netflix opening a new chapter on television horror, I thought I'd go through the show and break down everything that you need to know about it and its ending. Throughout this video I'll be discussing the major plot elements of the French horror show as well as what we can take from the final scenes of the limited series. There will be heavy spoilers here so if you haven't had a chance to watch it yet then I highly recommend that you turn off now. With that out the way I just want to give a huge thank you for clicking this video, now let's get into my breakdown of Marianne. We follow Emma, a successful horror writer who has decided that it's time to close the book on her biggest creation, Marianne. Emma's book centres around the character Lizzie Lark, who is haunted by the demonic force Marianne, and due to their gripping narrative, the stories have went on to become big business. However, Emma feels that she's finished with the character and the show opens with her pretty much announcing that her latest entry will be the last. This comes much to the behest of her fans, most notably her childhood friend Caro, who claims that her mother is in fact possessed by Marianne and that if she doesn't continue writing then bad things will happen to her and her family. This seems to hold a lot of weight after Caro commits suicide and Emma journeys back to her childhood home to discover that Caro's mother is indeed possessed by the witch. She demands that Emma continues her stories and after her parents go missing, Emma begins to write once more. We learn throughout the show that the stories of Lizzie Locke have been somewhat autobiographical and that Marianne has haunted Emma her entire life. We discover that 15 years prior, Emma and her childhood friends, known as the Shipwreck Kids, had summoned Marianne and now with the creature on the loose, Emma's new stories seem to be coming to life. Emma makes several advances to Sebi, her childhood crush, throughout the season, though he rejects them due to loving his heavily pregnant wife and her child. He seemingly comes round to it and the two do sleep together, which plays into the end which I'll get into later, but you have to be aware that Marianne is manipulative and plays on the emotion of the cast throughout, making them carry out its will. It's a truly gripping show that is laced with tons of terrifying moments that have genuine scares to them. Every character is perfectly played by the actor in the role, most notably Morel Herbstmeyer, who completely embodies the demonic force. Every time she appears on screen, you're genuinely scared over what she could do next, and she quickly cements herself as one of horror's best new icons within the first episode. Marianne is a show that's steeped in atmosphere and darkness from beginning to end. It's unnerving and feels like a timely horror rather than something that was filmed this year. It recaptures the feeling of dread from films like The Shining and is truly captivating throughout. The show itself is built around a nursery rhyme in both structure and plot. Throughout the season, we hear the tale of Marianne who was born on a Tuesday, happy on a Wednesday, married on a Thursday, witch on a Friday, caught on a Saturday, judged on a Sunday, executed on Monday and buried on a Tuesday. This instantly brought up visions for me of the Batman villain Solomon Grundy, but it's also how the show operates. There are 8 days in the nursery rhyme, the season takes place over 8 episodes and the show itself takes place over 8 days. The finale is called Tuesday and similar to the nursery rhyme, it's also the end of Marianne. The group seemingly discover Marianne's grave and using a piece of parchment that was there during her pact with the devil, she's finally destroyed. It comes at a heavy cost though, with the priest sacrificing himself and Emma has to travel to a spirit-like dimension in order to stop the creature's possession. The day is seemingly won though and it looks like Emma is finally free of the torment of the character after waking up in the hospital. However, Camille, Emma's assistant, is seemingly mute over the whole ordeal and Emma vows to visit her father often having previously ignored her home. In the end as she travels home with Camille, we begin to see her vomit which is later revealed to be caused by pregnancy. Emma seemingly slept with Sebi during the season, however looking back at it, things may not have been what they seemed. We know that Marianne was famous for never coming away empty handed and it seems that in the end she did get something, a child. Now there's a lot of evidence that Sebi was not in fact Sebi, but rather a manifestation of the character by Marianne. Firstly, Sebi uncharacteristically stated a lot of distaste for his wife and seemed more than open to sleeping with Emma, which previously he'd been completely against. He's also completely gone in the morning and in their final farewell, he doesn't even know what Emma is talking about when she brings up sleeping with him and he flat out denies everything. He seems angered that Emma is once more trying to ruin his family's life and I think it's pretty safe to say that we don't need to take him on the Jeremy Kyle show to do a lie detector test. 
he is not the father. Camille finally breaks her silence and hints that she knows what's been going on, even going to get a pregnancy test instinctively. In the final narration, we learn that Lizzie kept a piece of darkness with her, and she will warm it up within her, in her lap, she'll transform it. This highlights that Marianne isn't as gone as we were led to believe, and in the end it could be Emma's child that carries on her legacy. Emma's creation in the book was easy enough to get rid of, but her creation as a person, well, that's completely different. I can imagine that this will probably be the major conflict that springs forth in a second season. As Marianne died due to the work and storyline dying out, she had to find a new method in order to live on, and making Emma pregnant is as good as it gets in terms of a contingency plan. It ends the series on a bittersweet note, and lets us know that though we will be getting more of the binge-worthy horror, things aren't going to be easy for Emma. But what did I think of Marianne overall? Well, I thought that this show was incredible, and it truly is one of the best horror television series that I've watched probably since The Haunting of Hell House. This is incredibly creepy, and all of the performances are spellbinding. The season is about returning to face your past and things that you may have tried to bury and as far as skeletons in the closet go, Marianne certainly is one of the most terrifying. I did watch the show with both dubs and subs and I have to say that if you are planning on checking this out then it may be best going with the native language as there are a lot of elements to the performance that work better as opposed to the overlay. In the end though, whichever version you watch the show of, you're in for a real treat and Marianne is spellbinding throughout. I really wish I'd chosen to watch this over wasting my time with the island, so if you missed this last weekend then there's never been a better time to check it out. Marianne is great and that's why it gets an 8.5 out of 10. Obviously I'd love to hear your thoughts on this show and if you enjoyed it or not. Let me know your thoughts on the ending and if you enjoyed this video then please like it and make sure you check out my full breakdown of every time that Pennywise made an appearance in the background of a scene in IT Chapter 1 and 2. We went over the movie with a fine tooth comb and there's definitely some in there that will surprise you so make sure you check that out after this if you want something to watch. If you want to come talk to me about movies, TV shows, games and comic books then you can follow me on Twitter at DefinitionYT. It's the best way to get in touch with me and it's the perfect place to suggest new videos and content so hopefully I see you over there after this. Also just want to let you know that we're giving away a free copy of Spider-Man Far From Home on Blu-ray and all you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is to like this video, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and leave your thoughts on Marianne in the comment section below. The winner will be chosen at random on October the 15th and the Blu-ray will be shipped out from then to whoever gets the prize, so best of luck to everyone who takes part. This is the channel for people who are never missing television, so if that's the kind of thing you like, you need to subscribe to Definition. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this. You've been the best and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.